I received an email from from one of our Studio Insiders. If you're not a Studio Insider, it might be a good thing for you to check out. But anyway, the email uh, in the email, she sent me a photograph of this painting. This is a, a self-portrait by the artist Mary White. Her last name is W-H-Y-T-E if you want to look her up. She's a fantastic watercolor artist. And so she sends me this and she says uh, she wants me to do a quick tip on uh, the color. How do you find the color that she, the colors that she used to do that painting? She also asked for technique but this is watercolor technique and that's way beyond what I can show you in one quick tip. But if you check out Mary White, W-H-Y-T-E, in, uh, in the search bar of the YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, uh, you'll find some things about her. But we're, we're focusing on the color. So how do you get this color? Well, that all involves the color wheel. Most of you, when you purchased a color wheel, if you purchased one, got one that looks something like this. It's got all this stuff on the inside, back and front. All these little, um, I call it garbage. <laughs> and But it is purported to be very, very helpful to you to help you find the right color. You don't need that stuff. Now, <laughs> when, I, uh, when I was in the classroom, I always had my students to do this, to rip out that stuff in the middle. It just gets in the way, gets between you and your ability really ability to really use the color wheel. So I want to show you, I want to talk about the color wheel and how you would use the color wheel to come up with the colors you see here. Now, as I put this right here, you can see there's no color there that's really obvious, right? You might say it right in here in the face uh, there might be, but not really are the colors obvious to you. So let's use what I think of as the right color wheel. And that's this one right here. Now this one is uh, just like this one. So what is the color wheel for anyway? Why have a color wheel? Because it shows the relationship of all those colors. Now, first of all, there's something the color wheel cannot do. Cannot show you the values of the colors. Here, in order to get the values of color, the, the value scale is your best guide. The color wheel can, or this particular color wheel, really can only show you the hues. It really, this one doesn't really show you even the intensities or the saturations, but I'll show you more about that in just a moment. Let's talk about the hues. Look at this. This is marvelous. Just like a rainbow where a yellow merges into orange and merges into reds and on through the rainbow like that, the color wheel uh, actually se separates those individual hues that we're used to thinking of as yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green, and so on. And when you learn them by their labels, by what we've always called them, uh, rather than by magenta or cyan or grays or what do you say olive or you can think of all those those names we use for colors that are not on the color wheel if they're not on the color wheel they're not going to do you any good when you're trying to figure out color so we start with the color wheel now what are we looking for relationship all the colors that are on the wheel are have some relationship to every other color the one, obviously, now this may seem obvious to you, it is obvious, but if you think this through like this, you can come up with any color you want. Yellow, as it moves in this direction, and a little bit of blue gets into the yellow, it becomes yellow-green. And then, if you move in this direction, a little bit of red comes into yellow, it becomes yellow-orange. And then, when we have less of the red, and almost in, in, in hue, an equal amount of yeah, uh, yellow and orange. It become I mean yellow and red. 
it becomes orange. And then as it moves around and a little bit of red comes into it, it becomes red and so on as you move around the color wheel in any direction colors behave that way they have that relationship those that harmonize best together are those that are closest on the color wheel and as they get further away from the color wheel they get a different relationship now when yellow and blue are are, are located together well, you see they really contrast with each other because they're so different on a, a, at such distance from each other on the color wheel but two hues that are the most different from each other that have nothing in common are the ones directly across from each other on the color wheel we'll call those complements they neutralize each other and and the further so the furthest away a color is the more likely it's going to neutralize a color that it's going to be mixed with so that means also not only will violet neutralize yellow blue violet will neutralize yellow too it won't be a a, a, a complete neutral It'll lean a little bit more towards blue but it's going to neutralize it's got violet in it red violet's going to neutralize yellow too so if if any two colors have in them uh complements of each other they're going to play an, a role of creating neutrals when mixed together and look at this this is beautiful if you look at the what we call the tertiary colors, those that are made up of one primary and one secondary, when you look at the tertiary colors, they always have one color in common. So yellow, green, red, violet, both have blue in common. But then they also have complement. They have uh, the the yellow green has the green in it. The red violet has the red in it, which is complement. So they will both emphasize each other and harmonize each other in various proportions of mixes now if you know what you need to happen in order to get a color then you can figure that out just by doing this on the color wheel what i just explained to you you don't need those all those little uh, uh diddle dollies <laughs> that are built into most color wheels so let me show you how, how you can do that now most of the colors we see are somewhat neutral in fact, the colors that we see here in this photograph of, of this painting are all neutral. There are, there are no uh, fully saturated colors in here at all. Not even these. They're not fully saturated. So how do you go about finding those colors? So I'll take this down. I'm going to put up another. Now this is, this is a wheel that I've created. Uh, you can find it free if you go to our website, diamondmize.com. Two ends of diamond. Diamondmize.com. Click on free stuff in the menu and go down to the um, intense. I think it's called the six intensity wheel. But look for this. There are photographs of it there. Look for this. Now let's see what I've shown you here. I've given you another kind of diagram. I've given you a diagram that shows you what happens when the, co the colors opposite, the complements, are mixed into each other. So what's going on right here, uh, or what's going on right here, or what's going on right here shows you for example uh here this color has a little bit of orange mixed in it as it comes a little bit more orange mixed in it a little bit more orange mixed in it a little bit more so this is almost completely neutral and the right in here there are equal amounts of those hues mixed in here now some people think that hue uh, that intensity or saturation and value are the same thing they're not they have no relationship to each other what happens is uh, when you mix an intensity, you can also mix any one of these in any one of these values. Now you don't see it. You can't really see it when you get in the real dark values because in the dark values, all the hue goes away. So that they end up neutralizing kind of automatically because they don't have much light in the, the, the values that are dark. But you, you every single one of these can be made in these values. Now, so you refer to the value scale when you're working with value. You refer to the color wheel when you're working with hues. And if you get mine from the from my website, it didn't cost you anything. Why not? Then you can work with the, both the values and the saturations. So let me show you how we figure out Mary's uh, Mary's color scheme here. So I'm going to take this one down. Now let's put Mary's uh, put Mary's 
portrait, photograph of Mary's portrait up here. All right, now I've taken one of mine and I've cut slots out where the white spots are so that we can kind of see. Well, remember this is not going to show us the value, but it's going to show us the the, hue, the color. Color. And when I say color, I mean all three. I mean the hue of it, the value of it, the intensity of it, or saturation, or chroma. Lot, you know, we have three words that we use for that. Uh, so, but but this can't show me that. Oh, this can show me the saturation, and this can show me the hue. It can't show me the value. So don't confuse all that. Remember what each role of those things play in the color itself. Okay, so let's look. Let's just look right back in here. This, this you'd call that gray. That doesn't work when you're trying to mix it. Let's see what kind of color scheme did she use to come up with this. And when, if you use that same color scheme, you could come up with something similar to this, or you could do a study of this. So I'll just put this right here now. Look what we have here. We have the warm side from the yellows on over on this side are warmer colors. We have the cool side. Talk about the wheel. These over here tend to be cooler. Are cooler. What do I mean tend to be? Um, so if it feels cool to us, feels cool, feel. The words warm and cool have to do with the human sensation of feeling. So we know what something feels like when it feels cool, and we know what something feels like when it feels warm. So we associate those warmer colors. That's how we got that terminology. All right, so now, so it's not, we can tell this is not really in that warm color range. Not so much, or is it in more in that cool color range, or is it somewhere in between? Now, now as I do that, now watch, look right, look right in here, look between there. And watch when I scoot that around, how in some places it seems to blend right in here in the warmer side. But then I move over here and see now it seems to blend more like this on the cooler side. So we'll, we'll see. She's, it looks like, I see that this is the lowest intensity blue. Remember, this is a darker value on my color wheel than the value we're looking at there. But I can see, I can see how if this were lighter, it might be very much what she has there. What would that tell me? It tells me that if I use blue and orange in mixtures and add enough light, enough white to it to raise the value, I might be able to get that that uh, color. Now I'm going to just stop right here and show you that. I'm going to push this over. This will go off the screen. But I'm more interested in what appears right in here. Uh, and show you. Here we go. Thinking that through. So... I said blue and orange. Let's go back here just a moment. Let's go back to this one. I said blue and orange. They are compliments. Is it possible, I asked myself, that that's all she used? Did she only use ranges of orange and ranges of blue to create that portrait? I bet you I'm very, very close. Just that kind of guess because I just found out that this, this is almost gray, very, very neutral. And the only way it can get that way is having, uh, uh, is if it feels bluish, and it's very bright, it's very very neutral. Only way, only way it can get that way is to have orange mixed with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some blue. This is ultramarine blue. Uh, I'm going to take some blue. I'm just going to put it right here. You see, it's very very dark. So we know that's not going to work. But I need it to get to this value right here before I do another thing. Now, if I just go and, and throw orange in there right now, it's not going to mean anything. No. So I've got to get the value adjusted first. So I'll just reach in for some white. And let's see. Now, I need it to be this value right here. And so I mix it up on the back of my palette knife. Right like that. And that is a little dark, so it means it tells me, uh, it tells me that... Well, this varies in value, but I'm going to get the general ballpark just to start with because I'm doing a study now to find out what colors did she use. Uh, and so I'm raising the values a little bit by adding a little bit more white to that blue. And when I squint, and I'm saying, yeah, that's very close in value. All right, so for the complement, I need the orange. Now, on my palette, I don't really have the orange, but I have the ability to create orange. Uh, and it would be better because I'm doing the study 
to start out with a really high saturation of orange. So what I have is, is a, I have red, cadmium red light here. That's a red leaning towards orange. So I'll put that right here. It's very strong and tending strength, so uh, uh, it won't take much. And I have cadmium yellow deep. That's a yellow orange. So I'll just take some of that. Now I need to get that registering pretty close to orange. I can actually, if I want to, it might be helpful, I can actually use the color wheel to guide me there as to just how orange it needs to be. Now that goes back to the hue. That orange can lean towards yellow orange and it can re lean towards red orange. If I get it too yellow, with blue it's going to turn greenish. It'll be neutral, neutralized, but it's going to turn greenish. If I get it red, to red it's going to turn more purplish. So uh, so having it as to register as close to orange as I can get it, now do I need to lower the value? It's hard to tell with these, uh, these saturated colors, these uh, warm colors, it's hard to tell the value. So I'm going to put a little white right here. I'm going to raise that value just a tad, right like that. Yes, I can raise it with white. And now, now I want to try to get that color by mixing this into this. So I have I've done other quick tips where I've showed shown you about adjusting uh, hues when you're mixing them. But let's go ahead and let's do this. So I'm going to put a little bit of blue right here. Put a little bit, put a little bit of the orange into it, and let me just control it. Now watch that change gray. You see how it's beginning to kind of get a little greenish? That tells me I didn't get quite enough red in it. So what I'll do. No, don't don't start correcting that because you do, and the whole thing is going to go south. We that's what happens to people. They uh, guess at this and guess at that, but if you if you take a, a logical approach to this, you can get it right every time. So I need a little bit more red, a little bit more red in this uh, to make that work. Just a tiny bit. Let's get this a little bit more right in there. All right, now let's try it. Okay, now pull the blue into it like this, and watch it turn gray. You watch it. Isn't that magical how that just turns gray? Now it still feels warm, so we develop that sensitivity too. Uh, let's get this up. The uh, guess let's get this wheel right here. Pull it down. Look at the palette. See when it when it leans more towards the neutrals on this side, it's still warm. It's not cool enough. I need it to go cooler. I might check to see if it's in the right range over here because this is obviously warmer than that. So why not? Oh my goodness, look at that. We're right almost on it. So that tells me I'm in the right ballpark. Let's get that just a little bit lighter. That's too light, but I'm going to get a little bit of that lighter right here. And now let's try it again. Look at that. Very, very close. Maybe a little bit warmer for that section. Or actually it varies. If you'll notice, it varies. So, uh, and I can see that, and then I go in here, I see that in the scarf. If I go, I see it in the shirt. And look at that, I see that in the shirt, in a, in a jacket. Uh, do I see it in the face? No, I don't see any of that in the face. But I certainly see it in all those other places, so I'm halfway there. Now, let's go and see if we can get the cool. And we'll just do that by adding a little bit more blue into it. Little bit more blue, and now watch it. Watch it turn out of that warm into the cooler. All right, there it's almost neutral. Let's see where it is. Let's see where it is on our intensity wheel. Let's see. Okay, see, it's, it's left this now. It's left that now. It's moved in this direction right here, and it feels still a little bit green. So I can add a little bit more of that. Uh, no, let's go that another way. A tiny bit, so that means that it was a little bit. This is a, that's a, a little bit redder. But you make these adjustments as you go because you're getting information. I'm getting information right now. Uh, this is so I don't have to mess around when I go. If I were going to do a painting uh, where I need these colors, I wouldn't need to mess around if I knew already what I was going to need. Now, what does that give me? Oh. Uh, Okay, it, it's it's too almost too light to read. There we go. It's still a little bit, still a little bit in the, still a little bit warm. So now we put more cool into it. Ah, that feels like it's getting closer. And 
where is it? All right, there it is. Oh, no, it's very, very light, and this goes very, very dark here. So the, pla the place to match it is here. Uh -huh. see, see, now it still feels a little bit green. So that means that she's using more of a, a, a color that is more red-orange than orange. And, and that, and, but it still neutralizes, see? Remember I explained that, how that works to you? So, let's try this. Now see, that's what I'm talking about. Way to think. Thinking logically, the way colors behave on the wheel, what they do to each other when you mix them, rather than just guessing. Uh, and that, that way you'll always be able to go back to what you had originally. So, uh, it could be that she was using, it could be that she, I think I see a little bit in here, it could have been that she's using a range of orange to red orange uh, as the, the warmer colors. And she might even be using a range of the, the cooler blues to the warmer blues. But see, that's what you discover when you do uh, analysis like this. All right, so let's just uh, take that uh, one step further. Let's go over here just with the cadmium red light, which we know is a red orange. Now let's pull this a white into it, and let's raise the value. So it may, may not, that might be too red, but we'll find out. Now I'm going right back into the blue. I'm not going in here, because I want the original information. So I'm going right back into the blue, and let's begin to mix those, and we do that lovely, 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 lovely neutral. And a little bit red still. A little bit leaning a little bit still towards the red orange add more of the blue if it's cooler and look at that look at that look at that we're getting it a little bit more of the blue so that tells us then gives us the information we need and i bet you ask mary white and she's going to tell you yep that's exactly what i did look at that see see there so we can see that what she's done here is she has the, the red orange to a little bit of orange like right in here and then she has the blue and we see here the maybe the warmer blue uh, we can we can do that too well why not let's, let's just go just for blue if at that in that value range and let's see now this is ultramarine blue mixed with white and that's a little bit yeah well the value is pretty close right in there yeah that seems to be it uh, it could be that she used just the ultramarine blue. She might have used a little bit more, a little bit of maybe cerulean or a Prussian or something like that in there. But it looks like she's just used the ultramarine blue. But you see, the key is it's all neutral. And we can see that in the face, too, that she's used those neutrals in the face. You can see right here that, uh, let's just get the, uh, let's get the intensity wheel back over here and read those, read those in the face. You see right in here, uh, you can see she's used, she, there are the oranges and there's the red the orange and the red orange. You can see that's what she's used, but she, you can see that that is not the highest intensity. Uh, the, highest inten the highest intensity she's used there is about right in here with that lighter color. You can see that. You see it right in here. So, I think that you would have fun if you, you take, uh, you can go to, um, I don't know where this um, Studio Insider found this photograph, but you might just uh, Google Mary White, W-H-Y-T-E, don't forget, so why, not an I. You might Google her uh, paintings or even her portraits and find this, where you can do your own color analysis of this, analysis of this, or you can go to, go to my website and analyze some of my paintings. Go to anybody's website, but one of the best ways uh, to get this, the, the technique of mixing color, finding any color you see, it doesn't matter what it is, you can mix it, and you can mix it easily when you use the information on the color wheel the way I explained to you, paying attention. What does one color do to another? And that's the only question you have to ask. What is the relationship on the wheel, and what does that color do when mixed with the other, any other color? So I, I, I think doing some 
doing some studies where you this is all you're doing you're just trying to develop the skill of mixing color you will be absolutely surprised and absolutely blown away about how easy then your color mixing will be be sure and view all of our quick tips and while you're doing so subscribe to the channel click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week and if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.